as it might be to believe today, huge waves of peaceful but potent anti-war protests once swept continuously through the now often sleepy Foothill College campus during the turbulent Vietnam War era of the 1960s and early 1970s. Facing our own turbulent times, this half-forgotten history of peaceful protest is well worth revisiting. For just as at nearby Stanford, Berkeley, San Francisco State, and San Jose State, as well as at Merritt Community College in Oakland, anti-war movement leaders at Foothill College included not only student activists, but prominent Foothill faculty members as well. Meanwhile, passionate student editorials and news coverage flooded the pages of Foothill's student newspaper, The Sentinel, chronicling these rapidly unfolding protests in vivid detail. Here, for example, is a full-page anti-war editorial provocatively entitled Peace in Our Lifetime, published by the Sentinel student editors in 1972. And here's a Sentinel-sponsored student petition of the same era sent that same year to U.S. Senator Alan Cranston in Washington, D.C., himself a longtime Los Altos resident. Throughout it all, the college administration struggled to manage and contain these ongoing controversies, occasionally issuing heavy-handed decrees and then awkwardly apologizing for overreacting to a thriving and vibrant campus climate of discussion and debate. Student leaders from other campuses often visited Foothill as well, notably including Stanford student body president and famous anti-war leader David Harris, as well as eloquent anti-war speaker Hu Yen, an exchange student from Vietnam in the 1970s. In Hu Yen's own words, as quoted in the Sentinel, in the name of God and democracy, everything has been bombed out. As the student written Sentinel report continues, quote, Hu Yen spoke about the condition of South Vietnam and said that one fifth of all the land had been made unusable by napalm and other defoliation chemicals. He said there are about 300,000 children with birth defects as a result of the war. Of the human suffering and destruction of the land, Hu Yen stated, perhaps Vietnam is ruined forever. Other prominent controversies included an early incident in 1965 in which General William Maxwell Taylor, a former U.S. ambassador to Vietnam, was splattered with red paint symbolizing blood during a speech in the Foothill College gymnasium, and a massive campus convocation held in 1968 in the wake of Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination, at which global celebrities such as Joan Baez spoke out and sang together in full-voiced solidarity and grief and anguish. Of course, far larger, better-remembered protests swept campuses across the nation. Yet a leading anti-war journalist of the era, Hunter Thompson, explicitly placed Los Altos near the top of his now legendary list of counterculture high-tide locations. In what has for 50 years remained by far his most famous and oft-quoted passage, Thompson wrote, there was madness in any direction at any hour, if not across the bay, then up the Golden Gate or down the 101 to Los Altos. You could strike sparks anywhere. There was a fantastic universal sense that whatever we were doing was right, that we were winning. We were riding the crest of a high and beautiful wave. Today, it's desperately hard to believe that Hunter Thompson ever bothered to mention sleepy suburban Los Altos, now far better known as the birthplace of Steve Jobs, another Foothill De Anza College District part-time student who sparked yet another kind of global societal revolution entirely. Hint, that's why Apple Computer is still headquartered in Cupertino. And yet perhaps it's still worth recalling that Foothill was indeed once a kind of anti-war era icon, or in Thompson's words, a kind of quote, high water mark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. Well, at least until the next high tide of anti-war protests rises once again.